Conventional wisdom says to avoid discussing politics and religion in polite company. But what if that didn't just apply to a business setting or a Thanksgiving table, but to public life, such as in social media? And what if it wasn't just about someone's idea of politeness, but a matter of crime and punishment? Unfortunately, this is quickly becoming the norm in Mexico, where freedom of expression is being distorted beyond recognition through the abuse of the law. That's become the case for Gabriel Cuadri, a Mexican congressman and a former presidential candidate. Mr. Cuadri is an avowed liberal, but he is in danger of suffering severe personal and professional repercussions, including potentially irreversible damage to his career in politics because of a Twitter thread where he called into question prevailing orthodoxy on transgender ideology. In 2019, the Mexican Congress adopted a law requiring a 50-50 representation of men and women. Then, in the 2021 elections, two congressional seats reserved for women were given to men who identified as women. So, in a series of 11 respectful yet impassioned tweets in February of 2022, Mr. Cuadri voiced his concern. Allowing men to fill seats intended for women undermines the goals behind the 2019 law, Mr. Quadri pointed out. The tweets broadly covered issues relating to trans ideology, contained no foul language, and in no way amounted to an incitement to violence. Still, Mr. Quadri's tweets prompted a formal complaint from one of the two newly appointed members of Congress. The National Electoral Institute rejected both the complaint and a parallel request to impose sanctioning measures on Mr. Quadri. In a rational time and place, that would have been the end of the story. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Upon appeal, Mr. Quadri was deemed a violent political offender and found guilty by the Electoral Court. In addition, the court also levied a number of punishments against Mr. Quadri. First, the court ordered him to issue a public apology drafted by the court without his input and to post a summary of the decision on Twitter for 15 days at two set times per day. Second, he was sentenced to complete two courses on gender-based violence and transgender violence. And third, the court sent the case to the Comptroller of the Congress to impose further sanctions. Mr. Quadri has yet to hear what that includes, but they could be lasting and severe. An environmentalist who has based his career off of eschewing violence, Mr. Quadri has run out of avenues for justice in Mexico. With the help of ADF International, he has appealed his case to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. As a party to the American Convention on Human Rights, Mexico may be sanctioned by the Inter-American System's human rights procedures. Freedom of expression is a fundamental right that belongs to every person and the silencing of political leaders creates a culture of fear throughout society. If elected representatives aren't free to debate the issues of our time, what hope is there for anyone else? In taking to Twitter, Mr. Quadri was seeking an open conversation on a highly relevant matter of serious societal importance. His case mirrors that of Finnish Member of Parliament Paivi Rasanen, charged with the crime of hate speech that carried with it a two-year prison sentence. A long-standing civil servant, medical doctor, and grandmother, Rasanen won a major court case in 2022 after she was subjected to three years of onerous legal proceedings for a 2019 tweet expressing her views on marriage and sexuality. Let us not forget that in some parts of the world you can be sentenced to death for what you post online. In Nigeria, Rhoda Yao Jatao is on trial for blasphemy charges after sharing a message condemning the brutal killing of Deborah Yakubu, who was stoned to death for her Christian faith in 2022. While the consequences may vary, what this case is having in common is the dark underlying thread of totalitarian repression. Governments are weaponizing the law to stamp out speech that fails to comport with their approved worldview. It is imperative that we shine a spotlight on the repressive regimes under which you can be deprived of your most basic human rights for what you say online. Without free speech, there can be no freedom, and everyone should be free to voice their opinions without fear of punishment. Find out more about these cases at adfinternational.org. You can find more stories like these at adflegal.org freedommatters. While you're here, please like this video 
and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an episode.